several of today's challenges, from international peace to development and sustainability, are much more difficult to meet when states become fragile. We are nowadays talking a lot about um, forced displacement, for example. So one legitimate qu question that we are now trying to tackle in our ongoing work, is there something that we can tell the world about uh, certain risks associated with different patterns of fragility? These patterns can now be analyzed in more detail with a new model and online data tool developed by the German Development Institute in Bonn. The new model builds on core functions which an ideal state should fulfill. What was important for us was to understand state fragility as something that isn't one unique phenomenon. A limited number of core functions are really crucial. So we say what is important is state authority, which refers to the capacity of the state to provide security for its society for the citizens against physical threats. And the second dimension is what we call state capacity. It is the provision by the state of fundamental services for society. And the third element then uh, that always plays an important role is what we call state legitimacy. And legitimacy really refers to the acceptance by the people, by society, of the state's claim to rule them. While many political scientists use these dimensions to describe state fragility, the DIE researchers developed a methodology which identifies differences and similarities among states worldwide. At first, the researchers had to find informative indicator data with global coverage for all three dimensions. Measuring legitimacy indeed is a challenge. You cannot do large-scale surveys in all countries under similar circumstances because the countries are so different, the political regimes are so different, the preparedness of people to respond honestly are so different. And because of that, there are only indirect ways that you can uh, rely on when you want to compare all countries of the world, or as we do, 171 countries. The database is built on publicly available data that is collected by research institutions, NGOs, international organizations, and we use these indicators to form dimension scores or to calculate dimension scores that give an overview of how well a certain country at a certain point in time performs on this dimension. This structuring of data for countries worldwide now opens up a new perspective on state fragility. Then we used a statistical method to actually identify patterns in this data set. And um, you have uh, swarms of mosquitoes in the room that are not kind of evenly distributed, but they come in swarms. And the task is uh, to identify where these swamps are and who belongs to them. And these clusters are what we call constellations of state fragility. We're not aiming for a continuous index that uh, scores all countries along one dimension of state fragility. We're trying to highlight, especially for the middle range countries, that there are differences uh, between countries that might score very, very similarly uh, on the fragile states index. And if you like, we can distinguish um, two groups among these uh, constellations. One group of countries that is basically along a um, similar path along all three dimensions, dysfunctional states with problems in all three dimensions, what we call semi-functional states, where the situation is okay-ish uh, with respect to each of the three dimensions, and well-functioning uh, states, as I'm... Um, we could argue your typical Norway and other countries. Um, and then we have three other classes of uh, countries, three other patterns, uh, where basically the deficiency in one dimension is driving the pattern. 
countries with a particular legitimacy issue, with a, leg a particular authority issue, with a particular capacity issue. And we're trying to bring a bit of a system into this complexity and we're trying to simplify uh, this complex multidimensional concept of state fragility. I can think of two different types of uh, groups of users uh, for, for this web tool. And uh, one is um, kind of the practitioner's world. Our tool could help them to look at the issue of state fragility from the perspective of different types of challenges rather than um, the image of something to achieve by getting ever better or something that is getting ever worse. But different patterns that come with different challenges, I, th I think, is a better way of understanding uh, the issue here. And also uh, researchers get ideas of where to push fragility research in the future and uh, build up ideas for new studies, identify interesting cases. StateFragility.info allows users to identify constellations of state fragility for 171 countries, to explore their capability, authority and legitimacy scores over time, as well as single indicator data. Users can also compare countries and download graphs, maps and data to include in their own work. My favorite function is actually the probabilities views. For example, a country is labeled as low capacity, but uh, there's also a slight probability that this country could fit the semi-functional category. So uh, you can get a sense of uh, where a country fits in, um, in addition to the most likely category. And this is just a tool to not um, say these patterns exist theoretically. It's a way of saying empirically, we find these patterns in the real world of the 2000s or 2010s and uh, identify which countries belong to them.